Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming, and you wouldn't know it's mid-March by looking at the weather. This video is a response to Black Raptor 311 who asked on my Ask Me Anything video of last year, do I ever consider art in an RPG a deal breaker? And it's an interesting answer, interesting to me anyway, because I guess let's unpack it. Have I ever bought an RPG purely based on the art? Yes, I have. Have I ever chosen not to buy an RPG because the art wasn't to my tastes? Yes, definitely. And I think that tells us something interesting that I'll get onto shortly. Now, have I ever played a game based on the art? I know nothing of the game, but I'm at the table. The GM says, I'd like to run this. I have a quick look at the book, the art. Does it make me want to play? Yeah. Art has grabbed me like that before. Now, has it ever made me not want to play? The GM wants to run a game, and I look at it, the art doesn't really strike a chord with me. Do I decide to play anyway? I'll probably play anyway. So, art has never put me off playing, but it has put me off buying. And the interesting thing that this says to me is that art for me is an entry level phase of a product. This is the lure, this is the bait, this is the thing that lures me in in the first place to purchase the product. Because if I'm in a store or at a convention and I'm flicking through a book, I don't have time to read every table, read every piece of setting detail, find out about every class, spell and monster, but I do have time to look at the art and see what it tells me about the game. And that's why art for me is a deal breaker. Now there are various settings that I got into, firstly, primarily because of the art. Planescape, as a prime example of that, the Tony Ditalizzi art, which is so famous now from Planescape. The Cobb art from Wraith the Oblivion, I remember that grabbing me many, many years ago and first made me want to read a book of Wraith. And some of the most beautiful games I own now, I consider beautiful because of the art, of course, and would recommend to other people because of the art, because I feel it can grab you, immerse you in the game, make you understand it more than text potentially can. I include a book such as Changeling the Dreaming, 20th Anniversary Edition is that, because it's one of the most beautiful books on my shelves. So here's my question back to you, viewers. Which books to you speak to you? Which ones have the most beautiful art? Which ones to you drew you in because of the art inside them? And in fact, I'll turn that around and I'll ask which games put you off because the art did not speak to you. Speaking personally, I've often found that's the case when I find an RPG and the art is primarily photographs. I love photography, but if I want an RPG, photos don't really speak to me in the same way illustrations do. And I don't mean unaltered photos, I mean usually things like TV and movie tie-ins, like Buffy, Battlestar Galactica, if it's just screen grabs from a TV show, I, I don't feel engaged, because I could just watch that on TV. But, on the other hand, if I had a Buffy game, and an artist had depicted scenes from Buffy, had illustrated them, painted them, whatever, I would feel much more inclined to give the book a go. I'm clearly a very visual learner, <laughs> but, you know, we all have our different stimulus, stimuli, so there's the question. Which books have grabbed you because of the art? Which books have put you off because of the art? I would be interested to see. Thank you very much for watching.